guys welcome back to my channel oh opening videos is the most awkward thing like what do you want me to say what, what am i meant to say anyway kia ora guys i'm gonna take you guys through what i meal plan what i cook what i eat for dinner in a week for one person so you're like emma but why are you cooking for one person you live at home with your parents i do my parents have been away for like three four weeks but they get back at the end of this coming week so i still have one more week of eating and cooking for myself but it's been a few weeks now and um we've got this down to a fine art that sounds so ridiculous because people have literally been cooking for, for one person for like their whole life and i'm like you yeah, have three weeks experience let me tell you all i know cooking for one person it's so annoying i'm used to cooking for a whole whanau and or like the whole flat but when you're just cooking for one person it's kind of hard. It is a Sunday and Sunday is a day where I like to, well, ideally I would meal plan and get my things sort of prior to Sunday, but I have been away for the weekend. So we're making do with what we've got. Meal planning is done and I need to go to the supermarket and fight the Sunday crowds. But before I start talking about what I'm going to be eating this week, I need to make it super clear because I know that there's like a bit of stigma around like what I eat in a day, what I eat in a that, that is not the objective of this video. Please do not take this as like you need to eat this you need to eat no i'm not a nutritionist i'm not a dietitian i'm a 21 year old girl who just likes to eat food so if you'd like to take this as inspiration if you were either cooking for yourself or for other people or whatever by all means go ahead now that the disclaimers are out of the way let's talk about what i'm gonna be eating this week i have this little if you've been around here for a while this might look familiar to you i used to sell these on my website like two years ago but this is my little what i'm gonna eat for dinner this week little sheet of paper so you write it's got the days and you write what you're having and then it's got like a little space to write the shopping list. From the top, Monday, tomorrow night we have Caesar salad. Tuesday night, homemade fish and chips. Wednesday night, nachos. Thursday night, salmon bowl. I'm splurging out here because I realised I've been home alone for like four weeks and haven't had any salmon. That's like my favourite thing ever. So we're pushing the boat out this week. Then Friday, I'm going to have nachos again because I'll make a whole heap on Wednesday and then have a night off nachos and then have them again on Friday. Normally the weekends I don't shop for during the week because the weekends I don't really know what's happening with the weekends until they come around. So this is where I plan. And then before I go to the supermarket, I make a little list on my phone in my notes app and if you shop at countdown or woolworths as it's now called what the heck the app's actually really good you put in your shopping list and it tells you what aisle everything's in i used to be a countdown shopper and then i realized how much money i save from shopping at pack and save so i'm now a pack and save gal but i am well versed with where the things that i want are located in the supermarket so i list them off in the order that i need to find them on the shelves and then i tick them off as i go if you're from overseas and you're like what is pack and save i've been thinking about how i would describe it to someone who's never heard or seen of pack and save before but and Imagine like your normal supermarket, your Coles, your Woolies, whatever. Combine it with Costco. So we've got the size of like a regular supermarket, but the chaos of a Costco. Put those two together and that is pretty much pack and save. Okay, something that feels like it should be illegal, but is actually not an issue at all, is going into a different supermarket with like branded bags from the competing supermarket. Like I just wonder sometimes when like they see me packing my bags, they're like, mm. Traitor. But then like I have I have a bit of both. I have a pack and save bag and I've got countdown bags too. So like our loyalties are split. Welcome to pack and save. Car park is chaotic, so let's go and get through this together. <laughs> Shopping's done and I bought myself a little cream egg. I don't really know where I stand with cream eggs. I feel like you either love them or you hate them. Mm. Okay. Maybe I do like them. They're very sweet though. I'm gonna go home and unpack my groceries. We are home. While I was at the supermarket, I had to make a little bit of a pivot because one of the key ingredients uh, they just they did not have. Tomorrow night, I was planning on having Caesar salad. I've had that every week for the past two weeks and it's been great because I buy like the bag, like the salad mix. Like you know the one where you buy like the lettuce and it has like the sauce and like the other bits in it and you just mix it up? Fantastic because it's when I'm cooking for one person, I just get what I need and then I mix it up and that's enough to do me for dinner and then lunch the next day, which is great. But went to the salad section and they didn't have the Caesar salad one that I normally get. I'm like, that's fine. I'll just get a different brand. Nope, I didn't have any at all. I was like, well, that's fine. I'll just buy the individual ingredients and then just make it myself. And then I realized I have to buy a lettuce, I have to buy Caesar's dressing, I have to buy parmesan. And I was like, actually, you know what? That sounds expensive. I pivoted and I'm going to do corn fritters instead. I bought some corn because it's easy. You just have the corn and then you put it with the eggs, the flour, whatever. And then I'll have it with like a bit of a side salad because I had to buy salad anyway for my sushi bowls and I was already getting bacon for my cedar salad so I just got bacon for the corn fritters instead. Let me lay it out and I'll give you a quick rundown. Here's everything that I bought for my week of dinners plus um, I needed some 
toothpaste and toothpaste, so just push that to the side. But this is what I got fruit and veggie wise. We got onion, bananas, carrot, capsicum, raspberries. These were four ninety nine. Australians, you're gonna be cringing, but that is like good for New Zealand. Cucumber, avocados, spinach. These were $1.99. dollar ninety nine. Couple protein bars, bacon, mince, sour cream, kidney beans, tomatoes, corn, salmon, nacho mix, dumplings, eggs, bread, and nacho chips. It is Monday and it is actually lunch time. It is not dinner time, but I am on my lunch break since I work from home. If there's a day where I can kind of prep my dinner and my lunch breaks, so there's less work to do after work, then I 100% will. Today is one of those days. Tonight we're having corn fritters. So I have the ingredients out of the frame, but I promise you they are sitting there. I am using a recipe out of Simone Anderson's cookbook. This is a really good recipe because it has cream style corn and normal corn. Honestly, corn fritter recipe, just search it up. Like literally every man and his dog, I swear, has their own corn fritter recipe. So there's plenty of options online. I'm gonna put the mixture together and then chuck it in the fridge. And then when it comes time for me to cook dinner, literally all I have to do is turn on the pan and cook it. Let's throw some things in a bowl. I'm just giving my past self a little pat on the back. My evening hasn't really gone to plan. Not in a bad way. It just, I just, this things didn't really go to plan. But it's okay because I have my fritter mixture ready to go. So all I need to do is cook it. I am going to have it with some spinach, some fresh avocado, some bacon. Let's make some fritters. Pro tip, I learned this at a cooking lesson that I went to. To tell when your oil is hot enough, you get a wooden chopstick or a wooden spoon or something wooden stick it in the oil it's not ready yet because the oil's not bubbling around it when the oil bubbles around it that's when you know it's ready if you're doing fritters get a spoon with a point because then it helps you get the mixture off the end and into the pan okay, that's a little bit too much oil do as i say not as i do bacon is cooking not gonna lie fritters got a little bit burnt the avocados were all rock solid so we have tomato instead. This is the sweet chili sauce that we have. It is the best. I just realized this this looks like breakfast. See you guys tomorrow night. I think I'm actually gonna just switch up what I'm having tomorrow night. Like switch the order around a little bit. It's meant to be fish and chips. I think I'm gonna do nachos. So see you tomorrow. Happy Tuesday. I kind of alluded to it last night but I had fish and chips down for dinner tonight but I'm gonna do a little swap around and do my nachos tonight and do fish and chips tomorrow night. Nachos it is which is just what I feel like. I actually haven't been at work today. I've had my first ever sick day. I went to bed last night feeling like a little bit under the weather. Woke up still not feeling great so I worked for like two hours and I was like my brain it's not it's not with me today. So I've had the day off. I do feel like a nice homey meal and so nachos it is. I made this last week and it was so delicious. Perks of doing this while I'm home alone is that I can put all the spices in it that I want and it doesn't matter. My dad is allergic to onion and garlic, so if we have nachos at home, pretty much it's just like the nacho chips, the mince, a bit of tomato, like puree, a bit of cheese, and that's pretty much it. I can make normal nachos when it's just me, so that's what we're gonna do. We have diced tomatoes and red kidney beans, the nacho mix. I'm gonna also put in spinach and carrot. That's so weird, some crunchy frozen spinach. Look how cute this little minces. It's only 400, yeah, 400 grams. I was thinking about it at the supermarket the other day. It would be a much wiser choice for me to buy like more mints and then like separate it off and freeze what I don't use. But was I that organized? No. So again, do as I say, not as I do. I left them out of the fridge today because they're a bit hard and I'm hoping at least one of them will be good for a bit of guac. Comment down below your go-to chip flavor. This is what I got for last week, the tasty salsa ones. Salsa chips, I love. Also rate the Thai sweet chili. I was just gonna get like the plain natural Doritos in the green bag this week, but they didn't have any. And these were actually cheaper per 100 grams. This little gadget here is like my favorite. It's not even an appliance because it doesn't really need power, but my favorite little kitchen tool for chopping up onion. You just chuck it in and then you just like starting a lawnmower if you saw my previous video. And then you have beautifully diced 
onion. I'm just gonna put the lid on so I don't cry. I'm pretty sure they're literally like $7 from Kmart. They're just the best. The mixture is ready to go on some chips and go in the oven to be grilled. I just love how colorful it is. It probably doesn't really look that colorful on camera. I have the oven set to grill. I'm gonna do it in the bowl because things taste better when they're in a bowl. I'm so excited for this. Chips are in. Got the mince on top. Got on some cheese and it's gonna melt. So you kind of gotta be generous, otherwise it just like disappears. Put that in the oven on grill. I'm saying this like you don't know how to do nachos. I'm pretty sure everyone has cooked nachos at least once before in their life. And now we wait like a couple minutes and then it will be ready. When I cut open an avocado, I, ha I halve it and then I quarter it. And then you can peel the skin off it. And then you end up with it like that. There we go. Stunning. I was also editing a vlog today <laughs> and realized how much I say stunning or st stunning. I think I need to expand my vocabulary. Oh, that looks so good. <laughs> Look at that. Yum. And there's literally enough mixture left over here. That's probably going to do me another lunch and dinner and maybe like another lunch as well. I need to remember that this bowl has just come straight out of the oven. Otherwise, I am probably going to burn myself. I was going to make some guac, but I think... The avocado is good, but it's definitely not like good enough to squash. No, that's not the word to mash. Mash. Yeah. Oh, Lord bless this food into my body. Ah, I'm going to do a little taste test for you guys, but I know that it's going to be so hot. Is it worth burning my taste buds for you guys? I don't know. My mouth is watering. <laughs> so good. Time to eat dinner. And I'll see you guys tomorrow for fish and chips. Happy Wednesday. Tonight, we are having fish and chips. The oven, you can probably hear it roaring in the background, is preheated so it's time to put my fish in for 18 minutes. Oh, never mind, it's not preheated because I set it to the wrong temperature. And then these are going to go in the air fryer and I'm going to go make myself a salad with my cucumber and carrot and spinach. That's so sad. Can you guys see that? Beautiful. In the oven they go. Little dinner haul. Got my salad. Little chips with some garlic aioli and my kaimoana with my tatia sauce. I was like, oh, this dinner's gonna be kind of average, but now that I'm seeing it in front of me, I'm very much looking forward to this. That was so easy. That is my Wednesday dinner. So I'll see you guys tomorrow for Thursday's dinner. Tonight is literally the easiest dinner ever, and I'm so stoked about it because we are having leftover. Nachos! I had this for lunch yesterday as well, so this is going to be the third meal that I'm getting out of this and I'm probably also going to have it for lunch tomorrow. Stunning. I've got the oven preheating onto grill. I'm going to give a little bit of mince meat. I'm going to a what? I'm going to give the nacho mince a bit of a shake up in the microwave. Chuck it in a bowl with some nacho chips and a little bit of cheese on top. And then we'll serve it with some free shavakadu, which I don't actually think that one's going to be good. I think I need to cut open a new one. And some sour cream. <gasps> Look at that. Don't get me wrong, love a fresh dinner that's not, you know, out of a sistema container. But with like, well, nachos, curry, like anything like that, that like you put it in the fridge and it gives it a chance to marinate a little bit more. It kind of tastes better like second and third day. That is basically my dinner sorted. Oh, whoa! I knew I was going to do that. I just grabbed it straight out of the oven. It's all right. Didn't want fingerprints anyway. All right, I'm going to go watch some YouTube and have some dinner. I'll see you guys tomorrow night. And I'm not going to lie, I have saved the best till last. And I'm already excited for tomorrow night's dinner and I haven't even eaten this yet. It is Friday! I've been looking forward to this all week. And tonight we have... Seven! This is a big splurge. This this on its own was $12. So I'm making a like deconstructed sushi bowl is probably the best way to describe it. We're bringing back like 2016 when deconstructed things were like trendy. My rice is sizzling over here. It is time to construct my bowl. So how about I face the camera so that you guys can see what I'm doing and we can do this together like a little group project. We have a bowl. I'm going to put my rice on... Oh... On the chopping board. Yeah, nice one, Emma. I'm putting it on like half of the bowl. I have my little seaweed packet. So we have like six little sheets. I put them on the side. And then I stack up my veggies to hold it together. I've got all my carrot sticks. Some diced cucumber. Then a different color again. We'll go for some capsicum. Avocado. I have my edamame beans in here. Now for the main character. We have the salmon, but I'm going to peel the skin off the bottom before I plate it up. Put that on top like that. Oh my gosh. Then we have the teriyaki sauce. Oh, that's probably a little bit too much. You can put that over everything, but I just do it on the salmon. And then come some 
Japanese mayonnaise, some normal sesame seeds, some black sesame seeds. Gosh, this looks so good. This is my fifth and final dinner of the week. Well, that I'm showing in this video. Thank you guys so much for joining me on this week of meals. Hopefully this has given you guys a bit of meal inspiration. There was nothing like out the gate, like, whoa, that's like revolutionary, like no. I'm sure everyone's had nachos before. So anyway, that is my week of meals. I hope that that was um, some sort of inspiration for you, whether you're cooking for yourself, or maybe you're cooking for your whole whanau, or your whole flat, or whatever. But I'm gonna go and enjoy my salmon sushi bowl with, with my kombucha. This is such a primo Friday night. If you made it this far in the video, I would love to know, and I feel like everyone else would love to know, what your go-to meal is, whether you're cooking just for yourself, or whether you cook for a whole host of people. Drop your go-to cooking dinner meal in the comments. Thank you guys so much for watching. Stay safe, stay well, make someone smile, and I'll see you in my next video. Mm -hmm.